It's a sporting tradition unlike any other in Western Canada. For more than half a century, the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament has been a premier showcase of top local, national, and international basketball talent. The legacy returns in 2023 with Brit 53. This year, 12 high school teams from across Canada compete to add their names to the trophy. Stay tuned for the semifinal games right now on Shaw Spotlight. A.K.A. Craig Schumacher, and thank you very much for the introduction there, Coach Bay. First of the semifinals, first of the two. How pumped are you? Uh, this is this is the best place to be. It is an amazing experience. Come on down to the Bedford Gymnasium here in Saskatoon. Holy Cross opens up a two nothing lead, opening up in their one two two half court trap. Oh, and saved from out of bounds. Good play here. Trying to attack the basket. Out of bounds, ball back to the Raymond Comet. Both these teams, no strangers to Brit. The, the, the Raymond uh, Alberta Comets, they've been here twice. Finished up, finished runners up twice. Last time they were here was the last Brit we had. Brit 52 three years ago. They were runners up. They don't want to be runners up this year. No, they're definitely eyeing for that championship. Aiden Arcus, star player for the Raymond Comets, opens up with a three pointer from the corner. Holy Cross looks to answer front rim. Quick transition look. Up oh, and good. Holy Cross in possession. 5 2 for the Raymond squad. And you just mentioned that fast transition. We see that time after time with this Raymond team. They are so quick moving it down the hill. That's one of the best things about them. They're a really relentless group. They're able to attack the basket. Although Holy Cross typically has been able to show a lot of strength, so far undefeated, although this definitely stands to be one of their more challenging games they've played this season. Front rim, board controlled by Easton Tim, one of the Holy Cross stars, anchors their defense, and is a great young crossbow coming in. Another turnover for Crossbow. Easton Tim, six foot eight. We got a couple guys at six foot eight in the tournament. No one's taller, so, so he's amongst the tallest in the group this year. You know, one of the great things about Easton Tim, too, is he's large and strong, but he uses his size so well. Whether it's defending the basket, positionally, he's always in a great spot. Really altering a lot of shots, even when he doesn't block them. The other team's definitely aware of where he is on the court. Raymond, good passing, open look out by three. No good. Aiden Arkansas with the offensive rebound, though. Oh, pressure up, pressure up. 
Out of bounds, off cross. 18 seconds remaining in the shot clock. And of course, uh, we talk about Raymond, this is their third time here, runners up twice. Holy Cross, this is their second time here in the 53 years. Second only to the host Metro Road Redhawks. They're here every year. They know what this tournament's all about. They've won it. It's the last Saskatoon team to win it. Loves Holy Cross. 2004, the last time they won it, I believe. You're right, they went back to back. Back to back years. Former great Holy Cross greats such as Jordan Harbridge, Kevin Holman, and as well as many others were able to have back to back wins. Chris Bodner, great 10 point guard, leading that last Holy Cross team to win the game. Both, both these teams are basketball dynasties in their province. Raymond is a top five team every single year and has been for decades. Holy Cross, I can say the exact same thing. Oh, open three. Ooh, number 14, Woo! Owen Shepherd Hills ties the game up at a 5 5 score. No, it's tough for even commentators to get too much commentary in with the fast paced action we're seeing here. Strong rebound there and an over the back foul call. All right, Holy Cross inbounds here. We see Raymond continuing to play their man-to-man -man defense. Traditionally, we see most of that from Raymond, although they have played a little bit of a 2-3 extended zone at times as well this season. See, that's where I really rely on you, Coach. You actually know basketball. Well, it's true, and I did get to coach against the Raymond comments in our first game of the Ooh, tournament, so I had right. spent some time scouting them and seeing some of their other performances. Nice strong finish again by Owen Shepherd hills Oh, but quick in transition. Ooh, a little English as Aiden Arcus converts on the other end and a quick time out by Holy Cross coach Josh Rutten. Doesn't like a few of the transition defense scenes he's seen from the Crusaders. I'm gonna talk about it. Coach, you mentioned, I forgot all about, I mean, we're two days into this tournament, I already forgot what's happened since day one because so much has happened since then, but you, you mentioned you're right. You got to face off against Raymond in the first It was game. two days ago. Um, it, Raymond was able to kind of have their way with us, so I'm also trying to forget about it. <laughs> but no, no, it, it was a great thing. And again, one of the fun, most fun things for me as a coach in this tournament, as, as another person who helped organize it, is kind of scouting some of these teams and, and figuring out kind of their strengths and weaknesses. So leading up to this, I had the opportunity to watch some of the games that the Raymond was able to stream. They, had, they have a big tournament that they host called the Sugar Bowl oh, cool. um, that runs on December 26th and 27th right after Christmas. Wow. So I got to spend some of my holiday seeing some of the different different aspects of that tournament, their yeah. hometown gym, and, and so we got, definitely got to see kind of how they're competing in some of the Southern Alberta basketball. I mean, I I don't envy you, Coach, ha having having to play Raymond in the first round. Ooh, that's tough. No, it's it's this is a good thing about Britain. No matter what spot you're in, you've got to play good teams to win. So we're happy for the that's competition. Right. There, you, there are no easy games in Brit. You're not going to get an easy win out of anybody. Mm. All right. Holy Cross again in possession. Jack Gray. Oh. Outside. Back out. Little floater. That's Comes Reese Craft. Short. Misses her. Reese Craft, son of longtime referee and Mr. Fay University professor Rob Craft. Really? Yes. Did not know this. Oh. Owen Gray misses. Rebound. They're fighting for it. Ooh. Jump ball called. Possession will remain to Holy Cross. Tied at seven, halfway through the first quarter. And of course, this the first of two semifinal matchups. In the next matchup, immediately following this game, who do we got? Walter Murray Collegiate against? Against the Riffle Royals out of Regina. Out of Regina. Mm. Pre pretty amazing. I was saying last night, I can't remember the last time we're, we're in the semifinals. Three out of the four teams there were from Saskatchewan. Ooh, long, desperate shot, absolutely. Saskatchewan basketball is definitely a little bit on an uptick with some of the top teams. Cross takes a 9-7 lead on the offensive putback. Oh, Aiden, strong pump fake. He moves the ball from side to side. Open look from three. Oh, Ooh, that back looked, rim. That looked good coming out. Controlled by the Comets. Oh, nice Whoa. pass. And offensive oh, foul on the charge. And again, great defensive positioning by Easton Tim. Everson again, Harker called on the charge. Yeah, that, that is, again, one of his strengths as a player. Not only is he a big body, but he has a great job using his size and getting to the right spots. I like it. 
Fast-paced action, intensity off the start. Oh, stolen there by the Comets. Oh, Aiden Arcus lines one up from distance. Ooh, rattles it in and out. They get the rebound. That's Everson oh. Harker misses the three. And who else but Easton Tim with the rebound. It's going to be tough to out-rebound him. For three. three. Oh, no good, but a big rebound by Easton Tim. Puts it up. Controlled by the Connets. Oh, high post entry. No look pass. Oh, again, a little off the back rim. Still feeling each other out a little bit in these early spots. Jack Gray grabbed that rebound. Trying to attack the basket. Gets in close. Misses the bunny. Oh, Aiden takes the shot. Puts up for 310. In and out. Trying to control the shot. Oh, and Tim is able to rip it away from the smaller Comet player. Hard Good. take, no foul called. Fast break in, stride. Oh. Oh. oh! Good pass, good catch, but not able to finish. End Number to end action. 33 from the Raymond squad. We're going back and forth, back and forth. Not a lot of points getting scored here. Nope. I think the boys need to settle down a little bit and find their rhythm. Oh, another steal. Arcus on the fast break. Finds his teammate. Oh, strong take, but the foul will be called against number seven, Reese Kraft from the Holy Cross Crusaders. Under a minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Holy Cross up 9-7 over Raymond. So far only 18 points in the first quarter. Last night we saw a game with almost 50 points combined scored in, in the first quarter. Right now we're looking at like 20. This has been a low-scoring start here. A lot different. Well, I think as well, uh, guys put a little nervous to begin, but the other thing you have to remember is these good teams, they're not only good on offense, they're always really locked in defensively. They're going to make you work for every basket, especially Holy Cross. They like to stick in some of their 1-2-2 two, two half-court trap zones, and even if you are able to score against it, you definitely have to work the ball from side to side to create that open look so you don't get as many transition opportunities. Right. You might score some points, but they're going to make you work for them. Holy Cross up on 1.9-8. Good hard take and a nice finish at the basket. Jack Gray for the Crusaders. Into the game for the Crusaders, number six, Daniel Revering. Oh, ball tipped out by Reese Kraft. Raymond Comets will remain in possession. Holy Cross up three. Oh, three pointer. Ooh, just off that front rim there. Oh, another steal. steal. Trying to go to Gray. To Finishes strong. Jack Gray gets it. Oh, missed that pass. Side to side. Working it around. Wow, they work this ball fast. Great interior passing there, and the Comets convert. 13 10 for the Crusaders. Quick passing by the Comets. Holy Cross up three, under 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Working a little pick and roll action on the side. Now, Reese Kraft, hard take, cuts the floater, but rebounded. Put back up and no good, controlled by the Comets. Nope. Out and fast and fast on transition. Open look for number one from the Comets. For three. Ooh. Nope. Oh, Holy Cross, golf. number 22, tried to tip it off the Raymond player, number 33, Everson Parker, but unfortunately knocked it out of bounds. Under 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. Oh. oh. Back to the corner, Five baseline look, left. Ooh, just sail through the fingertips of number 22, open look in the corner. That's a long two. Ooh. Didn't just go. Just missed the shot. Well, an exciting three-point game after the first quarter of Brit basketball. 
Um, definitely excited to see Raymond down three points, but Holy Cross dodged a few shots there. Raymond definitely known as a three-point shooting team, and they missed about four or five makeable looks for them, good looks for them in that first quarter. So watch out. If Cross keeps allowing them to have those opportunities, they'll definitely be shooting and knocking down some threes. And you're right. And I think you mentioned here, you know, maybe two, three minutes ago um, about teams just needing to settle down. I think we saw we saw in, in kind of the last four minutes that have lots of turnovers back and forth. Um, you know, I think to kind of get this, you're going to have to slow things down a little bit, be a little bit more calculated here. It's a three point game, one possession game. Um, so we're close here. Maybe we could take some time right now. Talk about a few sponsors. Absolutely, absolutely. We have some amazing sponsors here that really do make this tournament all it is. First of all, we'd like to thank our Dakota Dunes Community Development Corporation, Cameco Engineering, Trail Appliances for all your appliances and more, Sasktel Laser Auto Body, Brad Redekop, Saskatoon MP West, and not but last least, we want to thank Colligan Water. Hey, Colligan man, come on down and refresh yourself at RIT Basketball. Everyone needs water. All right, we're ready to stick off, tip off this second quarter action. Here we go. Cross remains playing in that 1-2-2 two, two zone defense. And, oh, and another turnover there. And Cross converts it on the other end. And that was Kean Tyson. Kean Tyson, son of local basketball legend Sean Tyson in Saskatoon. Side to side. Ooh, great pass inside. Wow. What a finish. Great vision by number 33, Everson Harker. Oh, Tyson has it. Left Lots open. of time. Too Ooh. much time. Back rim. Another. He was a shooter, though. He had knocked down three or four shots in their quarterfinal matchup, so look for him to be able to put that up. High arcing shot. Ooh, again, off that back side rim. Holy cross in possession. Yeah, Keen Tyson, a six foot five, grade 10 forward. Lots of development to come as he's only in grade 10. Oh, trying to feed that ball into Tim and ripped away by the Raymond point guard. Wow, you look at the strength and ferocity coming from that little man, number 20. You love to see that compete level from these Raymond comments. Open look in the corner, front rim, and knocked out, out of bounds. Ooh. Raymond's taken, taken quite a few looks from, from behind the three-point line and have, have really been struggling here in the first half. No, no, it, yeah, a little offset for even both teams missing a few makeable shots. But like we said, remember, these are not professional athletes. They are just amateur athletes doing the best they can. So don't worry. As the game keeps going along, we'll soon see some more make. Oh, yeah, they're going to start heating up here. Tyson to Tim. Oh, he tries to pass that one inside. Oh, trap down below. The ball's able to move it out. Open look from three. Boom! Wow! Daniel Revering. Daniel hey, Revering. What a great shot. job managing to, to find the ball, to the, get the ball to the outside and get it to Revering in the corner. Oh, yeah. Good job. Oh, Arcus Ross. with the answer. No good. Bounce the front rim. Rebound Revering. Looks like he was kind of trapped under the net, so good job, Cross, being able to work it around and get it out. Oh. Good catch, and... Cross in possession, another three-pointer. Boom! Re that's Revering again. Back-to-back -back threes by Daniel Revering and a quick timeout by the Raymond Comets. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, All right. Wait. Holy Cross going on a bit of a run there, up nine. Absolutely, taking a quick nine-point victory. Those back-to-back -back threes, real killers, and both of those opportunities. The Comets had them trapped almost underneath the basket, and then the ball was rolling on the ground. They were able to kick it out again, so fortunate for Cross to be able to remain calm, move the ball, and Raymond's definitely going to try to up the intensity and up the pressure and get a bit more of their transition game going. And it's that kind of a game, right? It's 15 seconds, six points, right? That's all it took them. Like, we can have quick swings here. So, I mean, yeah, we got a nine-point lead, but uh, lots of game to play. Six minutes left in the first half still. We're, we're just getting into this one. No, absolutely. And we do want to remind everyone who is out listening, especially if you're listening in Saskatoon, that we do want to encourage everyone to come on out, pack this gym. The atmosphere, the energy in here is absolutely electric. Uh, coming up next, we have the Walter Murray Marauders taking on those Regina Ripple Royals. Last night, so far, the game of the tournament was that Walter Murray St. Effects quarterfinal that saw it came right down to the end and then 
Saint, ended up Saint having a 92-89 victory for the Marauders. Saint FX had a chance right at the end. They, they put one up at the buzzer, couldn't get it to go, but what an exciting matchup that was. Absolutely. Comets in possession, moving it side to side. Arc is trapped in the corner. And we have out of bounds. Ball remains with the Raymond Comets. Comets can inbound the ball. Ball in. Again, Cross happy to stick in that zone and really make Raymond work the ball side to side. Arcus takes one way, goes to the corner inside, and saved by Tim. Really agile move from the big man there. He's an agile fella. And he, he, I wouldn't think that, that, that a guy who's that big could move so well, but he does. Oh, Tyson for three, back rim, Whoa. back on top of the backboard. Oh, nice rebound, Vandenherk. Oh, put up another shot, in and out. And we have ball remaining with the Holy Cross Crusaders. Vandenherk is, is in there, getting bumped around underneath the net. No, that's one of the things both these teams definitely showed. That to compete on this level and compete this way, you definitely have to be willing to be physical. And both these squads definitely willing to bump and grind out a game. Yep, looks like it. Oh, inbounds Holy Cross. Number 10 is able to score, puts that shoulder into him, and offensive foul. You can kind of see number 10 just leaning in with his shoulder, and once the referee sees that, they're as apt to call the foul against the offensive player. Vandenherk, I like it. It was sort of a, a an almost mullet-style haircut, and I, I've seen I've seen fellas from several different teams, so I don't know if that haircut's making its way back, but I, I love seeing it. Brings me back to my high school days, you know, long at the back, short up top. Hey, you know what? You're nothing if not a party in the back, Mr. Schumacher. Uh, that's what they tell me. I try to be anyway. All right, we're back here. Holy Cross having that nine-point lead. Attacking the defensive Raymond, really trying to take advantage of some of their size against their smaller players. And absolutely able to convert on the post-up. Oh, good, good, good. Vandenherk again. He's been all over those rebounds. Swallowing up everything. Oh, Reverend pushing the ball up. Vandenkirk moves it to Tyson. Oh, Tim, Tim takes it and hard oh. to the basket. Oh. In and down. For a second there, I thought he was going to just lay it down hard, but he decided to go with the gentle roll and layup. Oh, a steal there. Tyson trying to dribble through. It's lost in oh. his feet a little bit. Oh. And they're able to get that ball into Tim. And again, Tim, so big, such strong hands. He does a really good job of settling down the Holy Cross Crusaders offense when they're getting a little side to side, a little out of their sorts. Tyson with a step back, little turnaround jumper, controlled by Aiden Arcus. And Holy Cross has been on a run here in the oh, second Arcus quarter. Arcus lines up a deep one and Oh, woo! there we go. Aiden Arcus, three point specialist. He's not gonna shy away from an open look. Narrowing the lead to, to 10 points, but as I was saying, Holy Cross really came up fire in the second quarter. What was that, I think about 10 or 11 unanswered points for them. Oh, entering that ball into Tim, poked away, ball will remain with the Crusaders. Easton Tim hunched over, collecting his breath. Well, that's what I was saying. I don't think Easton Tim has subbed off yet. He's played the entire game. Definitely a player they want to get a little blow from here and there, but he, they know he needs to kind of carry the load from them throughout this game. Strong take oh, and yeah. another finish. I think that speaks to the athleticism of these players. Forget, forget their basketball skill. Just being able to move that fast that much for that long. I mean, these guys are in incredible shape. Oh, three-point look and oh, in and out. Comets trying to buy a three-point shot, but outside of Aiden Marcus, they've really been struggling from deep. Oh. Levering looking to turn the corner. 13, good take all the way in and out and controlled by the Comets. White oh, men oh. foul, tough call against the Comets. Looked like they were just going up and contesting the ball, but the call goes against Raymond and will remain possession of Holy Cross. Number, number 10 there, Justin Baker. He represented the Comets yesterday at the pep rally in the skills competition. That was fun to watch. What did you think of the skills competition, Coach? No, he's, he's a very skilled individual, especially a big, strong individual, but definitely has a soft, silky touch as well. 
And Tim on the strong cut is able to lay that's it in. And another timeout by the Raymond Comets. You know, that's that's what I noticed about about Baker yesterday. You're right, you mentioned his size. So not only is he tall, but he's thick. Like, he looks like a strong, strong fella. Absolutely, absolutely. They, they're definitely a team that has seen the weight room once or twice yeah. in their lives. And and as you know, they're, they're a team with a lot of a lot of strength athletically in many disciplines. They actually were the team that won the 4A, the highest Alberta Division football provincial championship. This year. This year, this year. They won it what? back, I believe it was November 26th. They took on the Harry Ainley squad out of Edmonton. Yep, yep. And that Harry Ainley squad had nearly twice as many players as they did coming from a smaller town of Raymond, and Alberta. But Raymond comes up with the win. Raymond came up, and, and to be honest, it wasn't even that close. That, that's how dominant Serious. those comments were. They and actually traveled to and played a Saskatoon team, okay. St. Joseph in football, one of the top Saskatoon teams. And how that worked out. And it worked out in the Comets' favor. I do had about a 15, 18 point victory as well. Although, talking to coach Chad Palmer, I think he thought the game was a little closer in hand, and then eventually Raymond was able to beat them down the stretch. Kind of at the end. So, they already have a football provincial championship under their belt. I got to think that they, they're going to compete for a basketball provincial title in Alberta. What are the chances of that happening? Um, I definitely definitely a decent chance, although I did talk to one of my scout friends who does the provincial rankings for the Alberta yep. uh, earlier today. So the provincial rankings are supposed to be coming out um, next week. So on Monday they're supposed to be released. And he gave me a sneak peek, and they're ranked about six. Sixth or seventh in the okay. province basketball wise. Okay, interesting. But and, and so they're playing Holy Cross. My guess is Holy Cross is, is the number one ranked team in, in Saskatchewan. Uh, Saskatchewan currently doesn't have any official rankings. Okay. We have our city rankings as we go through. Yep. And I would say Holy Cross and Regina Riffle Royals in the other semifinal are kind of the two teams ranked one and two right now in the province. In the province, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Cross with another turnover gets in transition. A quick three-pointer, air ball by the by the Raymond Comets. Tim picks up the rebound. Actually, really just kind of grabbed it out of the air. Mm -hmm. Air ball. All right, setting up the play here. High post entry. Oh, Raymond has switched to their two-three zone. Oh. And Holy Cross with a quick entry and kick out to create that look. That was Jack Gray with the three-pointer. All right. I'll, I'll tell you, looking at the score, Holy Cross 34, Raven 15. I wouldn't have predicted this at the start of the game. No, nope, definitely a strong performance by the Crusaders. Wow. It seems like they're getting better and better every game. Oh, strong take and no foul called, but then number 30 working hard, and he is not happy with that call. They get the referee has him for a reach-in violation. Number 30, Nathan Nielsen, who's saying, I had the ball, I had the ball. He hoped the call and went uh, his way, didn't. That's sports for you. All right. Again, sticking in the 2-3 defense by Raymond, switched after their timeout. Cross, moving that ball side to side, trying to create a gap in the zone. And we have, ooh, a blocking call. Tough call there, a bang bang thing as the defenders slang in to try to gain position at the same time Tim's coming down the lane. They determined that Tim reached that space before the defender. He's gonna shoot a couple. Easton Tim up up and no good. Carlton coaches trying to devise a plan to try to get back in this one. Well, if Crusaders keep missing free throws, that's only going to help their cause. Aiden Arcus, quick pump fake, tries to swing that ball back out. And, three. and oh, not able to convert that one. No, yeah, the cold shooting by those lean in comments is a tough oh, look. It is tough. Up, up, and in. Another three pointer for the Crusaders. Work, 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 corner opportunity. Ooh, great hustle there by number 14, Owen Shepherd Hills, but he was able to just tip it out of bounds. Yeah, Raymond, tough shooting here today. I bet, you know, you, had to, you mentioned you had to play them in the first round. I bet you're thinking, they weren't shooting like this when we played them. No, they, they didn't, although give Holy Cross credit. There's two reasons why teams shoot bad. One, you miss some shots, sometimes you don't execute on the offensive end. But as well, the more pressure you put on the defender, or on the offense as a defender, definitely has done that. And Cross has done a really good job trying to speed up the Comets and not giving them any easy set threes. 
Right, so you're, so you're saying that that's sort of a credit to, to the Holy Cross defense almost. Yeah. It's a two thing, although believe me, if you talk to the Raymond Comet coaches, I believe they'd say they should have made a few more of those shots. Yeah. Tim, again, strong move down low, was able to convert. Opening up a 24-point lead and another turnover against that 1-2-2 zone. Tim, nice pass, draft wow. with a finish. Wow, Jack Gray. Nice turnover. Aiden Arcus moves it to the corner, open look. In and out again. Wow, and that is halftime. Holy cow, that went by quick. Oh, yeah, and holy cow, holy cross. Dominating, dominating first half. Am I right? We'd have to we'd have to go back and look, but am I right to say that in that in that second quarter, Raymond only got three points? I believe it was five. Was thought, it five? I, I thought they had ten points at the quarter they mark. Ten at the quarter. So five points in that second quarter versus Whoa. Holy Cross, I believe, had about I think they had I think it was 10 to 13 at the end of the first quarter. So Holy Cross is able to put up 28 points to Raymond's five in that quarter. Holy. Definitely a big margin. It's going to be a big, big reason where we're going to have to have the Raven Commons stepping up in this second half. You're right. It, it, I can't remember the exact score. I think you're right, 13-10. I do know it was a one possession game at the end of the first quarter. A few more than one possession now. All right. Now, exciting halftime show for those of us taking on the halftime entertainment here. We have our Chinese Dragon performance where we're going to get to see some of these amazing dancers here doing their Chinese, I believe it's the Chinese New Year celebration, although I am not certain on that. Good, Mr. Schumacher here pulling up the halftime show. The Lion, the U of S Lion Dance Group. So again, we want to thank them for coming out here and all the great work they do. Check out that Dragon sniffing the basketball. That's from the University of Saskatchewan. All right. Well, we do have halftime. We do want to make sure we thank some of our amazing corporate sponsors as well. This tournament wouldn't be able to work without this corporate sponsorship. Dakota Dunes Community Development Corporation, Me Sports, Husky Athletics, Smiley's Buffet and Event Center, Breck Scaffolding, Polygon Water, the Saskatchewan Rattlers, Ham Construction, Brad Redekop, and all of our other amazing sponsors. All right, well, thank you everyone for tuning in to this first half. We were expecting the Raymond Comets to come out with a lot of strength and enthusiasm in the second half. We're gonna throw it to a break right now, but don't worry, we will come back to tune you in for the second half of Brit Basketball.
each of us has a unique voice. Now it's your turn to sit in the director's chair by taking part in the creation of your community's next great story. Find out how to take advantage of broadcast industry training and bring your ideas to life. Or you can contribute by volunteering, where you'll discover new friendships, develop new skills, and help build local community programming. Punch TV is the nerdiest show in Saskatoon. If you like comics, movies, games, stellar events, and anything in geekdom, you'll love Punch TV. Host Jody Kaysen takes you in-depth with artists, writers, and guests from across the province, the world, heck, even the galaxy. Plus, regular updates from The Collector, The Movie Geek, and TweetBeat. I am Audrey. And I'm Leah. Leah inspired me to play hockey. The War Amps has helped me by giving me my devices I need to play hockey. Audrey has an amputation similar to mine. What does yours do? The stick clicks in it. My device from the War Amps allows me to shoot a lot better. It rotates like a wrist, which helps a lot with shooting and stick handling. When I score a goal, I feel really happy. for fine skins is still part of the North. It's cooked with Shaq. Cooking all the great things for you. And anybody can try it out. You just do what you do. It's cooked with Shaq. And we're back. So where are you? Are you a content creator looking to expand your audience and make your voice heard in your community? Shaw Spotlight wants to provide you with a platform to share your hobbies, interests, and stories. And all for free. Visit us to find out more. Hey there, welcome back everybody. The first of two semifinals, we have Saskatoon's Holy Cross against Raymond Alberta Comets. Holy Cross up 41-15 after the first half. It was a three point game at the end of the first quarter and Holy Cross ripped it up in the second quarter. 
absolutely. The Holy Cross Crusaders began kind of frustrating the Comets with a little bit of their zone defense. And again, the big thing to look at, the Comets not being able to hit any of those three-point shots is going to be a key for them. They're typically a good three-point shooting team. They'll need to make sure to convert on those looks. Comets they... remaining in a 2-3 zone to start this second half. Holy Cross, nice little pocket pass in there low. Blocked, but... Ooh, and the ball does go to the Raymond Commons. A little favorable call to start the half for the Comets. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what they need here to get a little momentum going in their favor. All right. Cross again in that zone. Work that ball into the middle. Everson side to side. The Comets really struggled in that third or second quarter part of me is shooting for, for three. Probably got one of maybe ten. You know, uh, like they're, they're shooting probably 10% from, from behind the arc right yeah. now, and that's not typical of them. Well, I think Aiden Arcus hit two, and those are the only two the comments have made. Okay. All right, strong take. Oh, but again, you see Everson Harker was in a solid defensive position, but his hands come down making contact. Referees are looking for that and definitely going to make the foul call. All right, number 14, Owen Shepard Hills to the line. Love that name. It does. It rolls off the tongue pretty okay. nice. Owen Shepard Hills. You know, Yowzi and I were talking yesterday. It sounds like a beautiful subdivision I'd like to move to, right? Shepherd Hills. Oh, the wife and I just moved out to Shepherd Hills. It's oh, nice. It sounds great yeah. up there. Yeah, nice little cottage country. Right? Oh, Absolutely. yeah. We think we're going to retire there. No, I, I don't know much about him personally, but with the name Owen Shepherd Hills, I guarantee he's got a bright future ahead of him. Absolutely, now. he does. How could you not? Oh. And clearly, he's a workhorse. If he's out here, well, I mean, if, if, oh, if, you, if you're good enough to make... It looks like we have a technical foul assessed to the Holy Cross Crusaders. Aiden Arcus to the line. You and Aiden I are yapping. Who, um, who is that called on? I, I, I did just see Ethan Tim at the bench talking to the coaches. I'm not saying it was called on him. No, it looked it looked to be maybe on Ethan Tim or maybe on Josh Rudden himself. We'll try to get clarification of that if we can. Sorry, we're distracted here. 42-18 for Holy Cross. Second half action. This is the first of two semifinals. Up next, the Walter Murray Marauders against the Riffle Royals out of Regina. Oh, cut to that high post. High low feed into Tim, but unfortunately a diving effort. Great job trying to go Great after effort. that ball, but the ball will go to the Comets. And the Comets, we kind of started off the, the game saying the Comets have been here twice and finished up run or finished runners up twice. Mm. Nice job there, getting that ball into Everson Harker. Great job moving it from side to side. And again, to beat Cross's 1 2 2 zone pressure really is important to be able to get the ball into the middle and attack from there. Mm. The Comets like, trying to put on some pressure of their own. Yeah, it looks like we are kind of moving into a new kind of almost a 2 2 1 press, but. They're able, Cross is able to stay composed and move it through and get a layup on the other side. Comets ball. Inbound it here. Holt finds in the corner. Quick open three. Boom! Ah, uh, Justin Baker! Justin Baker, shot maker, takes a three pointer oh, oh, for like the that. Raymond squad. Oh, again, good look. Robert Kraft, or sorry, not Robert Kraft, but Reese Kraft, his son, hard to the basket. Oh, in transition foul. Holy. Not able to convert by Everson Harker on the other side. Oh, what a pace coming out here in the second half. All right, looks like we have a score table malfunction. Right now, the Holy Cross side leads four, and the clock is still running. No, we got to. We're going to figure this out. It, it's yeah. all good. We, we got this. Um, maybe a good time to, to kind of slow things down. Raymond coach Ryan Baldry, he's he's fired up. He's yelling at his guys. He was he was chewing out number ten, Justin Baker, about something there. Maybe he doesn't like the hustle. I don't know what, but but he's fired up and he's letting the guys know he's, he's displeased with a couple things out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and again, you see a lot of those familiar names from that Raymond group: Brett Ralph, Bruce Dunham. The Ralphs, a very well-known family out of that Comet area. They had lots of uh, players move on to post-secondary. Um, in, in all sorts of different ranks, whether it's been football or in other ways. I know Coach Schneider, I was talking about how he's seen a lot of Ralph, I think he been competing for the UFC against him when he was a coach at the U of S Husky. In, uh, in football? In football, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you mentioned their, their football success here this year. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me. 
Oh, strong take, but blocked by the Comets. Yeah, getting up in transition. Aiden Arcus, he's lining up a three, turns it down for his teammate. Baker. Woo! Baker shot maker. That's his second in a row. Yeah, Josh Rudden has seen enough. He wants to talk this over with the squad and get them back. He will focus in. 48-27, 21-point lead. It's a big lead, but but still, the Holy Cross coach didn't like what he's seen here in the last minute here, as, as comments are uh, sort of having a little bit more success and, and kind of get making things a little bit closer. So he's going to slow things down, talk to the Holy Cross bench. No, that's, that's the big thing as a coach you always want to be aware of. You, have, you get three timeouts in the second half, so you, you always want to make sure you have at least one for the end. But as well, as the team started to build momentum, before they're really able to explode on a run, if you have an opportunity to, stop the bleeding right now, get the guys focused, get them set up, whether you need to switch a zone, switch anything, there to go. Right. And we have a local legend, Tim Holman, on the camera. Oh, as we pan over to the right, if we pan back to the left, we might be able to see local legend Tim Holman with his little girl. We see a lot of our great Bedford Road crowds, Amazing seeing some of those awesome people out there enjoying the festivities. I mean, the students, right? This place is packed full of Bedford Road students. I mean, they're volunteering, staff, students, alumni, Bedford Road parents. It takes a village to put this thing. It takes more than a village to put this thing on. Oh. And the Bedford Road community always rallies around this tournament. It's amazing to be a part of. All right, looks like Raymond is switching up their defense again. It looks like they're extending to a full court. Full court, is it a 2-2-1 two, two, trap? Yeah, it looks like they're running that full court 2-2-1 two, two, pressure, seeing how they move out of it. Cross, able to break it and get back into the half court. Hoping to create some more uh, turnovers in transition. Oh, a nice inside out look. Hard kick That's three, front rim, rebounded by Aiden Arcus. Pushes in transition again. Excellent three point threat. He's looking from side to side. Oh, and a foul there. And Aiden Arcus inbound the ball for Holy Cross. Interesting to see, in all my film watching, hadn't seen them extend too much pressure by the Comets in that 2-2-1 two, two, press. So interesting to see exactly with them bringing it out and being ready for it. Definitely a move that the coach wants to make to try to speed up the tempo and allow his team to create a lot more transitions. And boom, all of a sudden we get another basket by the Comets and now we have a 19-point game. And that's Baker again. But my guess is part of the reason you haven't seen them had to press like this before is my guess is you haven't seen them down like this before nope they've had some up and down wins but ooh, again we have owen oh. shepherd hills quieting the raymond crowd with a clutch three-pointer oh trying to sort of skip past the corner and tim's able to bat it out of bounds if you're in the first couple rows here you got to keep your head up and on a swivel well, raymond working it again all right, Aiden, a little pump fake, trying to maneuver for some space. Finds it back to Baker. Oh, open look from three. Harker. Ooh, Emerson Harker. Now he's getting that Raymond shooting we've been accustomed to seeing. Oh, trap coming, and oh, almost a steal. Tim hard to the basket, not able to convert, but a blocking foul assessed to the Raymond Comet. Taking a, an extra second to, to get up. I guess when you're six foot eight and, and big like that, when you go down hard, you might need to take an extra no, second or two like to I get said, up. He's a great athlete, a big, strong individual. I almost feel bad more for the floor than him with that <laughs> yeah, collision. True. Like, is our floor okay? You know how much this cost us? Yeah. Ooh, and again, I think it's the third missed free throw this game for Tim. So he's really got to try to settle himself down and be able to knock a few of these down. Or really is going to be happy to send him to the line. All right, one for two of this trip. You know, talking about the size of these guys, I couldn't imagine being their parents. Yeah, how do you feed, a, you know, like some of these kids? I see the price of my groceries and it's just me. How do, how do you feed if you got a couple boys? Do you just buy hay bales and put them in the backyard and just let them graze? The, you know, like, I don't want to see their Costco bills. I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what they're doing for grocery bills, but I guarantee you what, whatever they're doing, those boys are looking like they're strong and athletic, so they keep it up. Oh, they're well fed. Opens up off the zone, can rebound, good. And now we're getting out in transition. Aiden lining up a deep three. Oh, back rim, great opportunity. Oh, Aiden goes for the steal. Ooh, he wanted the double tip call for the possession to go to Raymond. But again, it will stay with the Crusaders. He's quick, just about picked that one off. No, no, I, I have to admit, Aiden Marcus is one of my favorite players that I've gotten to see in doing a little scouting pre-tournament. 
Just excellent skills, great shooter, but I just love how poised he is, how well he reads the court, and then how he's able to make great decisions in his transition. LA, he's good. And I'm able to clean up that basket for a two points. I love the heart and tenacity that all these teams play when they're on defense. You know, at some different levels, I, I don't feel like I see guys selling out like they do here on defense. No, it's for sure. It's, it's the beautiful part about amateur athletics versus professionals. It's guys are out here for the love of the game, and they're really rearing it all on their heart and sleeve. Even for the Bedford Road squad today, like it was a tough loss for us for the game for St. Joe's. Guys played hard and good, and I, I even had some tears in the locker room by the end of today too. So yeah. it's, it's great to see how much the young individuals care. This is, a, this is a big moment for, for your Red Hawk team, and, and this is a moment that they've been waiting for for years. Hadn't had Britt last year, didn't have Britt the year before. Um, so, so it would be only your grade 12 players who'd ever seen a Brit before, and they would have been in grade 9 the last time we had a Brit. Absolutely, absolutely. So I feel like they, uh, you, of, of course, uh, the Red Hawk coach and the Red Hawk players and all these players, I feel like you had a couple of years stolen from you. And yeah, I feel I mean, bad. It, was, it wasn't just here at Bedford all over the world with COVID, but like I said, we can't worry about the past. We're just nope. looking forward to the future and building this tournament and building this school back up to all the high and highlights that we can have. You know what? I, I, I think you did that. It, it, when, when I, it doesn't feel like Britt has missed a beat. This has been as busy as I've ever seen it. This is a, what a great atmosphere. Absolutely, absolutely. The community has gotten behind this Brit, and I, I'm so thankful for that. Parker. Oh. Hard take, not able to finish in transition. Crusaders bring the ball up, sets by Tim, hard to the basket, kicks it up to the corner to Tyson. Oh, and they get Tyson with an offensive foul call. He looks a little confused about that. I didn't see him extend his arm, but the referee saw it differently and will have a foul on 22 Tyson. Okay. Two and a half minutes to go. All right. 23-point lead for the Holy Cross Crusaders. And again, I don't think Easton Tim's been off the court this half yet. Again, you can see he's definitely working hard and making the difference with a great block there. Did he get a rest in the first half, or did he play the I entire first half? I think he's played half? every minute of this game so far as, I, as far as I can remember. So I think you're right. Interesting if Holy Cross is able to hold on to this lead, how that will mean for his endurance as they play their second game tonight uh, in the Brit final, if they're able to hold on to this victory. At nine. How, what his cardio the, is like. The, the winner of this game does have a bit of an advantage in that they do get an extra hour and a half to rest. Versus right? the they're, next semifinal. Versus absolutely. the next semifinal. I was thinking about that last night. It was like, that's a turnaround, right? Mm -hmm. The next semifinal, if you win that game, you're going to end it at about 4.30, 5 o'clock, and then you're back on at 9 o'clock tonight for the final that's not a lot of time it can be a quick turnaround oh another quick trigger three Ooh. all right Raymond pushes that ball up hard attack to the baseline oh quick three yes, Whoa. yes. there it goes for which was that 20 Taylor Ralph another one of the Ralphs with a great shot looking for more of those looks to go in Tyson looking to answer front rim Tim too big, too strong, but ripped away Whoa. from him by the Ralph. Attacking the basket hard, looking for an open shooter. Baker for three. Boom! Oh, Baker's been hot lately. And another timeout by the Crusaders. All of a sudden, we're down to a 15-point game hey, here. Hey, hey, With the three-point shots falling, things can turn in the blink of an eye. In a jiffy. Minute left in the third quarter. You're, you're right. I, I mean... I was thinking a few minutes ago that, like, well, this game's looking a little bit out of reach. It's not out of reach. No, yeah, we, don't, we definitely don't want to be making too many predictions for a cross final at this nope. point because nope. these Raymond Commons, one thing, two things about them, they're definitely great shooters, can heat up in a moment, and they have no give up in them. They'll be fighting from now right till the end. That's one of the things we love about their spirit and their compete factor, so we're excited to see how this lasts minute and fourth quarter of this game will go. And 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 yesterday in the Walter Murray game, that, that quarterfinal game, there's about three minutes left, and I think Walter Murray had a 12-point lead or 13-point lead with two or three minutes left, and I was, I did exactly what you said. I was kind of thinking, okay, they have this wrapped up. No, they didn't. St. No. FX had something to say, and St. FX kept flying back in the last couple minutes, coming down all the way to a buzzer-beating attempt, and, and they came up a little short. Yeah, there's plenty of time left, and, and a 15-point lead, I think, can melt off pretty quick. No, well, I, I almost felt 
sad for the St. FX coach in my scouting. I'd watched, they lost a tough semifinal in the Reb, one of Edmonton's top basketball tournaments, yep. to Vancouver College on a last second three pointer at the very last oh, second there. So oh, oh, they've been on the, the, the rough end of a few tight games this year. Oh, another quick turnover. Raymond back in possession. Being able to get a steal. All right, stepping through, stepping through, and ooh, foul assessed against Holy Cross Crusaders. This will be their fifth foul, which will send Ralph to the line. He was getting smothered there by a couple big fellas. Tough, tough situation there. That's exactly what Holy Cross wants to avoid, giving Raymond free opportunity for points with the clock stop. I think in the same situation, I'd probably just lay in the fetal position and cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, Those are two huge guys just standing yeah. over and smothering you. Like, oh. when you're when you're stuck when you're stuck in the trees, it, it can be difficult. Mm. Holy cow! Ralph missed the first free throw attempt. But again, that's that's one of the great parts about these amateur athletics is just how old these athletes are able to stay poised when there's pressure in their face when the gym's there. Ralph, Ralph kind of tilts his head back and laughs as he banks in the second free throw, <laughs> but they all count the same on the scoreboard, so he'll take it. Oh, you don't think he meant to do that? I, I have a feeling that wasn't quite the Raymond technique they were teaching him. <laughs> but he'll take it with a smirk on his face. Oh, great steal here. Raymond off in transition, ready to pull up back and forth. Moving that ball in. Ooh, tried to get it back out to Bacon for the shot. He's able to recover, though. Shot clock matching the game clock. Under 20 to go. Oh, corner three. Oh, just over the outstretch arm of number three. Cross in transition. Oh, no basket. Offensive oh. foul. Ooh, and Reverend can't believe it. He, he grabs his head. He cannot believe it. Ooh. No, Ralph did a good job. He was set, and I think he almost helped him a little bit by starting his momentum down, so when he took the hit, he was able to fall to the ground, and the ref rewarded him with the charge. Ralph's got a, 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 a sly look on his face, too. He, he knows he got a bit of a call there. He'll take it. Oh, good screen set here. Whoa. Ball back to Raymond. Blistering pass. Three seconds Three left. Seconds. I think he's going to shot off. Shot up, 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 and oh. Hits the top of the backboard and out. Not able to convert, but all of a sudden, a 14-point matchup heading to the fourth quarter. Eight minutes left to go. Plenty of time. You definitely got to like having the lead of the Holy Cross Crusaders. You've shown that you can do some good things both offensively and defensively. But the momentum is starting to just fractionally shift towards those Raymond Comets. So absolutely, you've got to understand this will be a good test for those Crusaders. How much pressure is the Raymond going to be able to put on them, and how will they respond to this little run by the Comets? You can feel it, uh, you know, starting to shift ever so slightly, and, and yeah, I'm starting to see more confidence in the shooting of, of the Comets here in the second half. They're pretty flat there in the second quarter, uh, and of course right. these Holy Cross coach, they, they know that that nothing's wrapped up yet, and that they got to finish strong. Oh, the last oh we've eight got minutes. some Raymond kids on the screen there for a moment. It's great. It's amazing that we ha always see the four young Raymond kids, I guess ages kind of four to seven, out there having fun, playing around, sitting on the bench with the team. Um, I don't know if they're younger siblings, younger nephews, maybe sons of coaches, but it's great to see how much of a family community that Raymond squad really is. Look forward to oh, seeing oh, them in, in tough pass, 63. just giving away oh. a pass in transition. No, that, just, that looked like an open ice hit in hockey or something like that. Those two big fellas just smacked into each other. No, absolutely. And, and yeah, Raymond's coach is a little infuriated just with the, the lackadaisical effort between his two players out there inbounding the ball. Yeah, this is a family event there on the little break. We, oh. we had looked like there it is. newborns in the crowd all the way to elderly people. This is entertainment for everybody, okay? Get down here. Check it out. Oh, oh, and poked away, but Anderson gets it back. Oh, kicks it out. Aiden's able to recover it. Good save by the Comets. See if they're able to use it here. Still 12 seconds on the shot clock. Oh, nice feed in. Oh, Ooh. in and out. Someone got a hand on that. Yeah, Baker. Baker doesn't doesn't like missing that one. You can see it on his face. Hard back and forth, corner three. Tyson attacks the rim instead. Puts it up Ooh. and through. Good body control by the great 10. Oh, skip pass over to Baker. Aiden, quick move back to Baker. Is he able to convert here? Oh! In and out and not able to do. Ralph up with that pressure defense, and it come, pays to fruition as 13 from Holy Cross. Jack Gray puts that ball a little too far out of reach. 
Just under seven minutes to go. 18 point lead for the Holy Cross Crusaders. Looking to solidify their spot in the Brit final. Oh, ball into the corner. Skip pass over. Hard take and floated Whoa. up and in. Nice silky smooth touch from Everson Harker. Sticking in the 2-2-1 press. Oh, he gives up sidelines. Aiden's there to recover. Skip over. Down low, great, nice speed, and yeah. Wow. Baker just a little slow to get set on that space, and they're able to draw the foul by number 10, Isaac Vanderher. Holy Cross working the ball around really well. I wonder, I once coached a Vanderher from Holy Cross, probably a couple years older than that one, with the Junior Huskies program. I wonder if that might be a younger sibling of the one I could. I would guess. Similar look, similar body type. So not not a really, really common last name either, Vandenher. Yeah, my guess. My guess is, is some sort of familiar relation. Yeah. All right, 17 point advantage for Cross here with six and a half to go in this Brit fourth quarter. Up, 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 and Whoa! in! Harrison Harker. Harker ready to go. Four, three. All right, and ball coming in. Cross is able to break through the pressure. Now they're trying to relax, move that ball in. Tyson from the corner. And again, Raymond's able to get that soft. Corner. Hard attack to the basket, Whoa. and able to get it in. May have dragged his pivot foot, but we'll take that. No travel <laughs> called. Oh, middle look. Oh, and Tim's got it. The strong hands of Tim. Tyson, good take, and is able to convert on the other side. Back and forth action. Oh, Aiden gets the open look. Oh, no. Tough, tough miss there. All right. 14-point lead for Holy Cross. Good attack in the basket, getting it in the middle. Tyson not forcing it. Now takes it in, being swarmed. Gray, little floater in the lane, well short. Thomas wanted to get out in transition here. Oh, ball's kicked out. Open look for a three, need this one short, and rebounded by the Crusaders. Tough one. Revering strong with it, ready to go. Her grade's got it. Crusaders. Ball low to Tim. Allows Holy Cross Crusaders to relax and set themselves. Little floating up and front rim, no good. Ralph again looking to push that ball in transition. Oh, this is going up. And Parker! Oh, not quite able to suck it into that rim. Great opportunities to really cut this one down to an 11 or a 10 point game. We've had a, a couple. couple miss on those open opportunities. Again, once you build that big lead that Cross does, it's so difficult. It's so difficult to be able to lose, to come back, because now you have to almost be perfect in every yes. shot, every transition as that clock's working against you. Yep. All right. Well, turn over there. All right, and we have a timeout now to the Raven comments. He's arguing with the rest. It looked like there should have been maybe a foul assessed by the, on the Holy Cross player diving through the ball. Comets did get the possession of it, but I think you probably would have preferred to get a foul on would've, one of those Raymond players. Would have liked the, that sorry, foul. one of the Crusader players. Those fouls become really, really important as we as we get down to the nitty gritty here, right? You kind of get into bonus. I'm gonna take some time here to, to thank a few of the sponsors. Me Sports, sponsoring this tournament. U of S, Husky Athletics. Smiley's Buffet and Event Center. You and I got, got the opportunity to, to be part of the Brit Breakfast yesterday. Smiley's doing the catering. Oh, great. I'm still full. I know. Yeah. From waffles, scrambled eggs, sausages. It, it, it was, was definitely great. a treat. I, I, I was trying to think of like, how many eggs do you think went into yesterday's breakfast with all the teams there? Each of these guys probably has six or eight eggs themselves. Like I'm going to say the number's in the thousands. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, there was definitely a few chickens put out the roost from all of those <laughs> eggs. But. You should have seen the plates these guys were coming back with. Okay, here we go. All right. Aiden Arcus in possession, moving it through. Oh, bad pass, trying to pass it right down from top to low against that zone. That's not going to work. All right, Crusaders again, trying to be calm under pressure, working it against that kind of extended 2-3 look we have here. Oh, oh, just out of the outstretched hand of Aiden Arcus, but a tough pass in by Kraft, and it looks like we're going to have a jump ball. Possession stays with the Crusaders. 
Seven seconds remain on the shot clock. Ooh. All right, cross to open up. And they run that same little stack play with five, four, three. Oh, cross has got to put it, get it off. Nope, no, didn't get no, it off in not time. in time. Shot clock violation. Just under four minutes to play. And we're going to have the Comets looking to push the tempo. All right, out and ready to go. Oh, looking at the corner look inside. Up strong, and the hey. foul. Good finish by number 33, Everson Harker, the and one. And all of a sudden now, he read, he's at the line. He's got an opportunity to get this down to an 11-point margin. So don't count out these comments quite yet. And yeah, you can see Tim had gotten his first rest the past minute and a half, two minutes on the bench. And, and with that change in momentum and then coming close to a 10-point game, uh, Coach Josh Rutten is quick to put him back in right. and start controlling his He didn't get much of a rest. He came onto the court huffing and puffing. <laughs> you know, like, it's not like he came on fresh. No, no, but again, you want that big body, and despite despite being, a, I'm sure, tired at this point of the tournament, we can still see Tim doing everything he can to play through that. Ooh, tough shot there by Kraft. Is it Comets back in possession? Ooh, Aiden Arcus looking for a place to move the ball. Oh, and another foul call. This one against number six, Daniel Revering. It looks like Everson Harker for Raven. He's limping a little bit. It's not slowing him down, but you see the sort of in-between plays here when he gets time chance to slow down. He does have a bit of a limp. All right, Aiden looking for some open space. Moves it from left to right. Oh, a little pull-up jump shot in and out, and controlled by Kraft on the glass. Oh, looking to dribble through. Revering throws a little skip pass up. Oh, and again, we have a foul against Ower and Shepherd Hills using his body, dipping his shoulder to clear some space, and the possession back to the Comets. <laughs> Holy Cross coach doesn't agree with that. Doesn't no. agree with the call. He's I, I, I understand home. what he says. It did seem a little on the soft side. Yeah. Ralph in transition gets that ball in. Little jump shot. Oh, off the front rim. Baker move it side to side. Oh, hard take. Kicking it back out to Baker. This three's going up, and it is, oh, front rim and no good. Rebound again, oh. controlled by Tim. Cross in possession. Oh, balls into Tim. Kicks it out for three, but instead they're just happy to race some clock. Nice pass inside, and Kraft's able to finish at the basket. 14-point lead for Cross. Just over two minutes to go in the game. Ralph in possession, trapped in the corner, able to move the ball from side to side. Oh, Aiden Arcus, open look. Yes, oh. that's what he's been looking for. Nice All right. Game cut down to points. 11. This is, this is as close they, as they've been oh, since the start of the quarter. Oh, and another steal by Ralph. He's looking around. He says, I'm going to put it up a little deep, but Aiden's able to follow with the shot. And we have ourselves a nine-point game. And, and Cross, and, oh, and another steal. That ball oh, rolling everywhere. Scramble. Baker in possession. Holy All right, Ralph cow. taking a look. What's kicks it to Aiden. Then? That shot's going up, up, and in. Oh! Timeout Crusaders. Oh, the Ooh. crowd likes that one. Holy cow. And now this is pumping. This is happening. We have the Raymond Comets down 58-64. Six points. I, I mean, holy cow. Cross has been up by 15 to 20 points since the start of the second quarter and, and at moments looking like this game was all but over and I know there's lots of time but when you're up 25 or were they up 25 at one point? I think it was 23, 23 22 in that mark you're over up, 20. When, when you're up that kind of big early on well huh, what did hey Raymond ain't giving up they, they got it no. a two possession game here with a minute 45, like there's, there's plenty of time. No, again, yeah, it, it's great to great to see kind of that enthusiasm and, and how all of that works. And again, so much credit to these Raymond boys. Hopefully they're able to come out here and hopefully pull off this comeback, send it to overtime for a great finish. But oh. it, it, it's tough when you're when you're missing shots early and you know they're shots you think you can converge. But they've definitely had a great job 
um, being able to stay composed, stay poised, and Aiden Ark is two huge threes. Again, such at a clutch individual, poised under pressure. I say at the right time. Job. Oh yeah, no, he's he's definitely a player that I, I love watching, love competing against, and excited to see where he might go, where he might grow from here. Now you you mentioned overtime, coach. The words came out of your mouth. I would love some overtime here. This what an exciting game. No. I don't I don't have a pick to win. I just want more of this game, more Brit basketball. All right, cross. Shots coming down and oh mm. misses it. Oh. Ah, shot clock was winding back down. in possession. Yeah, back over to Aiden Arcus. Using the dribble, trying to figure out the spot. Back over to Baker. Skip to Ralph. Oh, he's going looking over to Baker, moving it from side to side. They're looking to try to create an open look, but Cross's defense still Five swarming. seconds on the shot clock. They got to do something quick. Oh, strong take and finish. Oh. Four-point game. Nice finish by Ralph down low. Crusaders got to keep being aggressive now. Don't back down. Under a minute to go. Four-point game. Oh, open look by the Crusaders. Back and forth. Shepherd shot Hills. Up. Hello, oh, oh, in, pushing in for transition. Oh, 45 seconds oh, to Arcus go. Oh, Arcus lining up the three. Oh! No! Ready to Way. go. Raymond, one point game, 40 seconds left. I don't know how much of the crowd noise you can hear, but this is pandemonium in the gym. One oh, point game. Almost a steal there. Eight second violation. I hope you Ball can feel that Raymond. at home. Coach and I are standing up in the booth. I can't sit down for this one. All right, and we what? have ourselves a timeout with 32 oh seconds left. Oh my goodness. Coach, if a minute ago you told me we'd be here right now, I'd have told you you're crazy. Tell you one what. One point game with 30 seconds left. What a rise up by this Raymond group. Unbelievable. Again, we talked about it. 14 points going into this fourth quarter. We said, hey, let's see what happens when these Crusaders get a little pressure on them when that, when that intensity's up. They switch to that 2-2-1 two, two, press in a different way they've had to navigate breaking the pressure, and they've had some turnovers. And the big thing is even when they've broken the press, they haven't been aggressive against it, so they haven't scored as many points, and it's allowed the Comets with their quick transition game to claw themselves oh, right bad. back in this. And I'll tell you, either Raymond bought, brought about 10 busloads of fans here, or the hometown Saskatoon crowd has got behind them because this crowd is going nuts for Raymond right now. Oh, it's it's hey, it's great to have an underdog story and Holy Cross powerhouse. I've got so much respect for them, their coaches, and their program. But there's also a little rivalry with a lot of the schools in and around Saskatoon and Holy Cross. Oh. So they're, 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 some of the rival schools, whether it's Murray, whether it's um, Bowman, any of the different schools Dude. here, they don't they don't always cry when they see Holy well, Cross lose a game. Either. Either you go to Holy Cross and you want them to win, or you want Cross to lose. If you don't go to Holy Cross, you don't cheer for Holy Cross because they are a powerhouse year after year. All right, Arcus in possession, 30 seconds left. Oh, looks like Cross has switched. One second left on the shot clock. Shot does that, hit rim, that it's rim. good. Yep. Oh. Oh, and a turnover! Oh dear. Not able to handle the pressure over. We have 12.9 oh. seconds left. Oh dear. And another, the final time out by the Raymond coaches. They're gonna have an opportunity to drop a play to win this one. Whew. All right, for everyone in Saskatoon who's not currently at Bedford Road, Feel this energy, feel this excitement. Come on down to Bedford Road. This is the first of two semifinals as well. We obviously have some of our consolation games and then our final tonight. So make sure, get on down here, check in this atmosphere. This crowd is electric. It is an exciting, exciting moment here at the Bedford Road Gymnasium. If, if you're not in the Kelly Bowers Gymnasium right now, you're missing out on something special. No. Nope. Winner of this, we got a one point game, winner of this is going to find themselves in the final tonight at 9. Raymond, Raymond's been in the final twice before, come runner-up both, both times. times. They want to change that. Holy Cross is no stranger to the Brit final. In fact, they're the last Saskatoon team to win a Brit, going back to back in 03 and 04. They want to change that, and they want to win a Brit here in 2023, no. almost, almost 20 years after their last one. 
what a game. No, it's, I tell you what, this is such an exciting moment, such a great atmosphere, and we're, we're on pins and needles here. Me and Mr. Schumacher here, we are standing, we're standing in the booth. I, I can't sit down for yeah. this. Everyone's locked in, ready to take it in. 13 seconds. All right, corner look. Arcus moves it from side to side. Drives baseline, looks to kick it out. Ralph moving it. Five Elsa seconds Arvin left. For the three. In! Are you kidding Two me? Two seconds. Here we three. go, one last and chance. Oh, and that is. Wait, hold, hold, hold on. Up, hold hold up. the phones, folks. Hold the Hold phones. Up. Waiting to see the referee's decision here. What is happening? Waiting to see what has gone on here. What is, I, I do not believe what we have seen here in this fourth quarter. All right, referee's decision here. It looks like this could be what, the end of the game. Is that the game? Is there a foul call? What? The refs are talking about I it. I believe they did call a foul. They're just assessing whether or not that foul occurred before or after the clock or expired. Foul called! There is a foul called. There is one second left, they're saying. Again, that's not a shooting foul, so it will not be shooting opportunities for Cross. I don't care. Cross can score here. We have I know they can. one second, one second being put on the this clock. One second being put on the clock. No timeouts remaining. This is going to go down in Brit history, Side out, folks. Holy Cross. What play, what system are they going to run trying to get a three-pointer for the win, a two-pointer for the tie? Write this down. This is the game for Rob the books. Easton Tim. And game is over. Whoa, wait. The Rip. Raymond Comets have is won. No foul called. Aiden Arcus with I an epic three-point shot to end, to have this historical oh, comeback. Man, I cannot and believe end what we this witnessed Holy here. Cross run. Wow. wow. What an amazing, amazing semifinal game. Oh, holy. What a oh. treat it was to be a part of that. Raymond solidifying their spot in the final at 9 o'clock tonight. They're going to play the winner of, of who's up next, Walter Murray versus Riffle. I, Oof. I just, Catch your breath. Take your moment. Hey, amazing performance I, by both squads. I'm speechless, and that doesn't happen often. No. I mean, in, in moments like this, as a coach, so happy for the Raven Comets and how they did. All those guys, Aiden Arcus, Baker with so many clutch threes and everything they were able to do. And... Heart, heart has to go out to those Crusader kids. Everyone from Tim to Tyson to Revering and Kraft. Oh, what they played a team. their hearts out. And, and, uh, and uh, believe me, I, there's no consoling those right now, that, that those losses. It's such a tough moment, but believe me, that's not the last we'll see of this Holy Cross team. They have, they have high expectations throughout this year, and they're going to be doing everything they can to build through it and, and then hopefully be able to advance on to seeing a provincial final brit final uh, and everything else in between all right we're, we're gonna wrap it up take a little break but stick around coming up really quickly ripple royals versus the walter murray marauders in the second semi-final all right <laughs>